In this video, I'm going to cover how I designed the plywood chair that I made recently. That video was a collaboration project with John Heiss from I Build It, where we both challenged ourselves to design and build a chair using only one sheet of plywood for material. The plans and a cut list for this build will be available via my Patreon page if anyone is interested in building one of these for yourselves, and there'll be a link to that page in the description box below. I use SketchUp for designing the chair, which is a 3D CAD program, and for home users, it's free. I really like it, and I find it really easy to use, especially when compared with AutoCAD, which is kind of the industry standard CAD program. I've been using AutoCAD for years for my office-based day job, and it is much more difficult to learn than SketchUp. With SketchUp, I'm self-taught, so there's a lot that I don't know. But generally, I've always been able to find ways to do whatever I need to do just by Googling things. I'm by no means an expert, so I'm not going to talk about how to use the software in this video, but if you are interested in learning how to use it, I'd highly recommend some of the tutorials on YouTube, which I'll link to in the description box below. Both Jay Bates and Matthias Wendell have playlists covering using SketchUp for woodworking projects. Matthias covers all the basics and his videos are really quick to follow. Jay's are more in depth and go into more detail, but both are excellent. So the challenge was to build a chair and the first idea I had that I thought would be interesting was to make an armchair. And I also wanted to design and make something that would look really cool. And that was basically all I had. Before I started designing anything with software, I first needed to work out what dimensions I should use as I wanted the chair to function well and be comfortable. One of my favorite chairs in terms of design is the Barcelona chair, designed by modernist architect Miles van der Rohe and designer Lily Reich. I hope I said those names right. I love how they look, I like the dimensions and the angle of the seat, and I find them really comfortable too. So I did a Google image search for Barcelona chair dimensions, and I found some diagrams with dimensions on that were really helpful for determining things like the height that the front of the seat needed to be from the floor, the width and depth that the seat needed to be, and also the angle of the seat. So that was a really great start, but as a sense check, I got my lawn chair out in the garden, as that has a similar seating position as the Barcelona chair, and it's very comfortable, so I took some dimensions from that too. The lawn chair certainly doesn't look as cool as the Barcelona chair though. Now that I had some dimensions to work with, I could start designing in SketchUp and it took a few attempts until I had a design that I was really happy with. The first drawing I did was useful for coming up with the main form of the chair, and I had the idea of using two rectangles for the arms, but the chair looked really clunky and boxy and certainly not cool enough to get me excited about building it. The second iteration I did was an improvement on the original. It looked lighter and less boxy, but it still wasn't cool enough. Rather than making changes to the previous drawing, I decided to start the third version from scratch, just because sometimes I find I tend to come up with better ideas doing it that way. Here I'm drawing the pieces for the arms, so I start by drawing a rectangle to the dimensions I wanted, and then I extrude the face by 18 millimeters, which is the thickness of the plywood that I would be using for this project. I always use the group function to group the components of each shape together. That just makes things easier to work with and easier to select too. That's the bottom of the arm, and I copy and pasted that for the top of the arm too, because they're the same size, and I moved it up to the height I wanted, and then I could draw another rectangle for the upright pieces and extrude those faces by 18 millimeters too. Then I could copy and paste all that to give me the second arm, and I spaced them apart by the distance that I wanted the width of the seat to be. Next I used the measuring tool to add a guideline so that I could draw in the seat panel at the height I wanted it to be, and then I could tilt the seat to the angle I wanted. I needed some bracing pieces to support the seat and link the two arms together, and there'd be four of those in total, the first of which would be a bottom brace, which I placed right in the centre, mainly so it would be less visible from the front and make the chair appear lighter. Then I added the front and back braces. Both of these needed one of the long edges to be angled to match the angle of the seat, so I used the protractor tool to put in a guideline, and then I could draw the new lines and delete both the old lines and those guidelines that I had added. Next I could draw the backrest and then I added the top brace. This would need an angle on it too to match the tilt of the backrest. 
and then I tilted the backrest to the correct angle and positioned it. I then realised I would need to cut an angle onto the backrest panel too, so I angled the edge that meets the seat panel. And at this point I was really happy with the design. On SketchUp you can also add dimensions to the drawing really easily and that enabled me to write up a cut list showing full dimensions and quantities for each piece that needed to be cut as well as the angled cuts which I took from the drawing using the protractor tool in SketchUp. Once I had the cut list I could then figure out how I could cut the sheet of plywood to make the most efficient use of the material and the way I do that is to first draw a 2440 by 1220 rectangle to represent the 8 foot by 4 foot plywood sheet and then I can mark up the cuts I need to make and this helps me with two things first I could check that one plywood sheet would be enough and as you can see there was more than enough material here to work with which meant that I would have plenty of plywood left over to use on other future projects and secondly, I could figure out where I could ask my timber merchants to cut down the plywood sheet in order that I could fit it into my van to bring home. And in this case, it made sense just for them to make one rip cut lengthways down the sheet. And that way I knew that I could still get the cuts I needed out of the two pieces. So that's it for this one. I hope this was useful to some of you. I hope you could take something from it. Showing the design process in a video isn't something I've done before. So please let me know if this is something you'd like to see more of in future. And also feel free to let me know if you don't want to see any more of these videos. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. And thank you for watching.